Refrigerants and lubricants inside of systems and what can potentially go wrong. That's the topic for today's checkup with Dr. Chuck. Hey everyone, welcome back again to another episode of Refrigerant Checkup. Today is part two of refrigerant and lubricant interactions. So if you haven't caught part one, you may want to jump out now, take a look at that. That's where I discuss the basic interaction properties of lubricants and refrigerants, things like viscosity, solubility, and miscibility. But today I want to focus on how refrigerants interact with lubricants inside of systems and particularly focus on a few things that can go wrong. So we know that uh, the purpose of a lubricant in a system obviously is to provide lubrication, but it also can help with making seals, with managing noise, with managing temperature, but we really want to focus on the lubrication aspects today. That's really what the lubricant's most important job is. That is to decrease wear on moving parts, bearings, pistons, valves, uh, anything that's mechanical, made of metal inside the system, uh, needs some lubrication to prevent it uh, from failing prematurely. So let's start with the compressor. That's the main part of the system that really uh, is a place where lubrication is important. Um, so in order to do its job and lubricate, the oil or the lubricant needs to stay in the compressor. Now we know there's a small amount of oil that escapes any compressor and goes out into the system. And that's fine as long as it makes its way back to the uh, compressor where it can do its job. Uh, oil circulation rates or amount of oil that escapes can range from a few tenths of percent up to several percent or even higher if things uh, aren't working particularly well. But as long as that oil can make it back, uh, we're not in too bad a shape. So that oil return really is important to make sure that we do the proper design, installation, when it comes to things like line sizing, uh, sloping the lines appropriately, having the proper uh, velocities, all the good practices, pr uh, oil traps, all the good design properties and practices uh, that we know how to do in the HVACR industry to make sure we get good oil return from, uh, from the naturally occurring oil circulation rate. So let me take a minute and talk about a situation that can occur uh, when the system isn't operating properly. And that's uh, while the system is running, you can have a situation um, called floodback and or washout. So floodback refers to refrigerant, uh, specifically liquid refrigerant, flooding back into the compressor. Compressors, as we all know, are designed to handle vapor or gas, uh, not liquid. So we don't want liquid coming into the compressor. It's not particularly compressible. It can result in broken valves and broken pistons. Uh, but as it relates to the lubricant, that liquid refrigerant can actually wash out lubricant and, uh, and leave bare metal uh, where the bearings uh, rotors, where moving parts are supposed to be. And, and a lot of machines won't operate very well or very long without lubricant. So we want to avoid uh, washout of the lubricant and avoid floodback of refrigerant. And the way we really do that is controlling superheat. If we have adequate superheat on, coming out of the evaporator and superheat returning to the compressor, it's going to ensure and give us a safety margin that we don't get liquid back into the uh, compressor. It's also the reason we have things like suction line accumulators, kind of a last uh, ditch safety effort. If some liquid makes it that far, it can knock out the liquid from the line so it doesn't go into the compressor. So uh, in order to avoid that floodback washout, again, you want to keep an eye on superheat and make sure your system is operating uh, with the appropriate levels so you can avoid washout uh, from floodback. A second area of concern, uh, and this time it's when a system is in off uh, cycle or off season, particularly it occurs, uh, you know, in winter when maybe an air conditioner is shut down. And that's what we call refrigerant migration and or flooded start. So as we know from thermodynamics, the refrigerant is going to seek out the coldest part of the system. And uh, if the system is shut down, the refrigerant can migrate or move and condense uh, probably in a place where it's not supposed to be, in a compressor, in a compressor sump. And uh, it will sit there until that system is started up. And while it's sitting there, it will dissolve into the lubricant. So when the system is finally started, you get a rapid change in temperature and pressure, 
All that dissolved refrigerant is going to rapidly degas out of the lubricant, resulting in a lot of foaming. Uh, obviously, the foam, the lubricant is going to move places where it's not particularly uh, useful, where it shouldn't be. You're not going to have adequate uh, viscosity, adequate lubricant to do the lubrication of the moving parts during that uh, transition, during that flooded start. Again, the way to avoid oil foaming and the flooded starts and refrigerant migration, a lot of it is built into the design of the system these days. We have things like pump down cycles where we can close the solenoid, close a valve, keep that refrigerant uh, out of the dangerous areas uh, during the ice off cycle. It's also the reason why things like crankcase heaters or belly band heaters are sometimes used. They keep heat on that lubricant uh, so not as much refrigerant can dissolve in it, very little. So when you go to start up, you don't have this rapid degassing, the foaming, uh, the improper lubrication. You don't run into those kind of issues. So in summary, those are the three uh, main factors I would keep an eye on. One, the natural oil circulation rate of a system. Two, uh, flood back and, and wash out of lubricant and three, uh, uh, refrigerant migration and flooded startups. Uh, there's a lot of other things to consider when it comes to lubricant in the system. Perhaps I'll cover them in future uh, episodes of the checkup. Uh, you can look for wear metals, trace metals in analyzing lubricant. Uh, you can look at, for fluoride, chloride ions, look for what's going on with refrigerant if you analyze the lubricant. How do you handle lubricant if you have a compressor burnout or something else going on? Uh, Lubricant issues when you're doing retrofits. If you're changing one refrigerant to another and you have to change uh, lubricants or maybe you don't or you have some options uh, in between. I'll cover some of those in future episodes and along with anything else uh, you'd like to hear about as it comes to refrigerants. Um, please feel free to shoot me an email. I'm always uh, glad to hear from you, hear your feedback, hear your uh, questions and the things that you're interested in, in learning about refrigerants and uh, any information or experts I can go get for you and uh, share that information. That's what I want, I want to do. So thanks again for checking out this episode. We'll be talking to you soon. Uh, be safe out there. Have a great day.